So we're busy with paperwork for COVID, and we're all focusing on COVID. And so one of the things I'd like to talk about is when I talk to ER physicians around the country, what's happening? Well, because COVID has become the focus, people with heart disease, people with cancer, hypertension, and various things that are critical are choosing not to come in based on fear. So what that's doing is causing the health system to focus on COVID and not focus on a myriad of other things that are critical because we don't have the staff there and major, the major component is fear. People are saying, I don't want to go get seen by my doctor. What if I get the COVID? Even though everything we've studied about quarantine, typically you quarantine the sick. When someone has measles, you quarantine them. We've never seen where we quarantine the healthy, where you take those without disease and without symptoms and lock them in your home. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? I also wanted to mention that 96% of people in California who get COVID recover with almost no significant sequelae or no significant uh, continuing medical problems. We found 6.5% and then California has found 12%. So the more you test, the more positives you get, the, the prevalence number goes up and the death rate stays the same. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And as we move through this data, what I want you to see is millions of cases, small amount of death. Child molestation is increasing at a severe rate. We could go over multiple cases of children who have been molested due to angry, Family members who are intoxicated, who are home, who have no paycheck, these things last a lifetime. This isn't about a seasonal flu. These are things that will follow these people and affect them in a negative fashion for their life. Suicide is spiking. Education is dropped off. Economic collapse. Medical industry, we're all suffering because our staff isn't here and we have no volume. These are all real things that I'm seeing every day. I don't, I don't read about this stuff. I'm seeing it in my clinics. We have clinics from Fresno to San Diego, and these things are spiking in our community. I'd like to go over some basic things about how the immune system functions so people have a good understanding. The immune system is built by exposure to antigens, viruses, bacteria. When you're a little child crawling on the ground, putting stuff in your mouth, viruses and bacteria come in, you form an antigen antibody complex, you form IgG, IgM. This is how your immune system is built. You don't take a small child put them in bubble wrap in a room and say, go have a healthy immune system. This is immunology, microbiology 101. So wh what I'm seeing is when you take human beings and you say, go into your house, clean all your counters, Lysol them down. You're gonna kill 99% of viruses and bacteria. Wear a mask, don't go outside. What does that do to our immune system? Our immune system is used to touching. We share bacteria, staphylococcal, streptococcal bacteria, viruses. We develop an immune response daily to this stuff. When you take that away from me, my immune system drops. As I shelter in place, my immune system drops. You keep me there for months, it drops more. And now I'm at home hand washing vigorously, washing the counters, worried about things that are indeed what I need to survive. Let's follow the science. If you have a normal functioning immune system, you need interaction. The, the, when a child's in a womb, you're in this protected environment. When you come out, you have almost no immune system. You develop that through touching your mouth, touching your eyes, virus, bacteria, virus, bacteria, immune response, IgG, IgM. This is how you build a strong immune system. It's okay for us to go to Costco, but not to church. Do, do you see the lack of consistency here? From a, from a microbiological, immunological standpoint, that doesn't make sense. When you wear gloves that transfer disease everywhere, those gloves have bacteria all over them. I'm wearing gloves, not helping you. As your mask that you're wearing for days, you touch the outside of it, COVID, and then touch your mouth. This doesn't make any sense. We wear masks in an acute setting to protect us. We're not wearing masks. Why is that? Because we understand microbiology, we understand immunology, and we want strong immune systems. I don't want to hide in my home, develop a weak immune system, and then come out and get diseased. Is the flu less dangerous than COVID? Let's look at the death rates. No, it's not. They're similar in prevalence and in death rate. 
And when someone, what's interesting to me too is when someone dies in this country right now, they're not talking about the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the stroke. They say, did they die from COVID? There's, as you, I, we've been to hundreds of autopsies. You, you don't talk about one thing. You talk about comorbidities. Their vessels were narrowed. Their lungs were a smoker. COVID was part of it. It is not the reason they died, folks. My friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting. When I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. If you're young and healthy, why would you, why would you quarantine yourself? It doesn't make any sense. You quarantine the ill. If you look at uh, biblical times, you look at leprosy, Mycobacterium leprae, which is the bacteria that causes it. They isolated the sick. They didn't isolate everybody else. And when we look at people that have locked down and people that haven't locked down, we have massive data. It is not statistically significant whether you lock down or not. So why are we doing it? The building blocks of your immune system is virus and bacteria. End of story. There's normal bacteria and normal flora that we have to be exposed to. Bacteria and viruses that are not virulent are our friends. They protect us against bad bacteria and bad viruses. Normal flora, it, we all need normal flora. What Dr. Erickson is saying is when you are self-isolating at home for two or three months, you lose that normal flora. So I guarantee when we reopen, there's going to be a huge, huge amount of illness that's going to be rampant because our immune systems have weakened. And that's just basic immunology. And I say, do we need to still shelter in place? Our answer is emphatically no. Do we need businesses to be shut down? Emphatically no. The, the secondary effects that we went over, the child abuse, alcoholism, loss of revenue, all these are, to, in our opinion, a significantly more detrimental thing to society than a virus that has proven similar in nature to the seasonal flu we have every year. We want to make sure we understand that quarantining the sick is what we do, not quarantining the healthy. Um, we need to make sure if you're gonna if you're gonna dance on someone's constitutional rights, you better have a good reason. You better have a really good scientific reason and not just theory. And the, the one of the most important things is we need our hospitals back up. We need our furloughed doctors back, we need our nurses back, because when we lift this thing, we're going to need all hands on deck. I know that the local hospitals have closed two floors. Folks, that's not the situation you want. We're essentially setting ourselves up to have minimal staff and we're going to have significant disease. That's the wrong combination.